everybody who's been a part of your journey since you started this thing, just like everybody who's been a part of mine, good, bad, and different, they added value. Yeah. And, you know, every single employee, every single partner, every single whatever, you know, whether it ended good or not, there was value add there. And yeah. they were important for a season of the business. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Big Dog Podcast. Really, really excited for the show today. Got a friend of mine, Stan Smith, in the studio. Well, his studio today, I should say. Stan is the founder and CEO of X Dog. And unless you've been under a rock for the last several years and you're anywhere in the dog space, you have for sure heard about X Dog and the phenomenal work that they're doing, you know, focused on the health and well being of of dogs around the world. And so I had the pleasure of being on Stan's podcast a couple of years ago on one of my trips out to Texas uh, where he's based out. of. have got the tourist facility and, and hang out for a bit. And we've been connected over the years through some different things. And, you know, we finally got him here on the big dog podcast. So Stan, welcome. What's up, man? Glad to be on. First of all, I want to say thank you for inviting me, man. I've been I've been watching and a big fan of your uh, podcast for a long time. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I'll put you to the list with my grandmother, my mom, mm -hmm. and uh, I think my wife tunes in every once in a while. So we're doing OK. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. How's Texas, baby? How's Texas? Man, it's raining a lot here. Other than that, man, it's typical Texas, you know, hot one week, freezing cold the next week, and you know, but I love it. That's awesome. That's awesome. So look, you know, let's dive in first talking about kind of your story, how you ended up on this path that led you to X Dog. You know, take us back a little bit. Tell them about you. Well, it all initially started like my love for dogs when I was a kid. You know, I grew up around four years old. I had lost my eye. And then, you know, I'm biracial and I grew up in a small town of like 2,500 and it's called Mason. In city illinois so okay. it's predominantly white town father you know i stayed with my father my father and my mother got divorced and she ended up moving down to louisiana and at the end of the day uh you know like i was just a kid with a bunch of insecurities and my grandma had dogs and a few of my friends had dogs and one day i ended up getting a dog and you know dealing with a lot of insecurities dogs don't care about that stuff you right know? yeah care about what type how rich you are what type of clothing you wear you know they don't care if you're disabled or anything else they, it was just one of those things where i found and fell in love love and trusted dogs. So yeah. when I knew I was able, when I was old enough to actually get dogs, I was like, man, I'm going to get my first, you know, pit bull, you know, and it's just one of those things. I was in the music industry. I wanted a pit bull. I ended up getting a pit bull. And then it was just like, you know, one of those $200 dogs out of Craigslist and sure. met somebody in the parking lot, got it out of the back of the truck, his little red nosed dog named Deja. And um, then I started taking a little bit deeper dive. They had back in the day, the message boards, and that's when the American bully started to actually become mm -hmm. present, you know, and I ended up, you know, at the time, I thought it was a lot of money. I spent like $1,800 on a dog named Caution who came out of a very popular dog of the guy who created uh, Razor's Edge American. Okay. He's actually out of Virginia. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then we got on the message boards and I took, I went down this rabbit hole of all these American bullies. And the next thing I know, I started investing into American bullies, throwing them in videos and stuff like that and gain, you know, popularity and notoriety through the music and having the dogs. But just like with any dog community, you're going to run into, you know, they want you to take certain steps steps. They don't want you to fast track. So right. you have individuals who've been in the game for a long time. And then there's this punk kid, you know, comes in three years, he knew how to buy dogs. Cause I had a vision for phenotype, right? Like my dad raised King pigeons and King pigeons is like a 40 ounce man-made bird, right? Yeah. Big, short beaks, big chest, short backs, everything that you ideally would want in a bully dog. You right. Know? Right. Structure -wise. So I knew what to look for. You know, they, you want big head. I know how to look for a big head. You wanted short backs. I knew, you know, like right. just extremities on a, on, on a basically an American pit bull terrier with a little bit different demeanor. And um, it was just one of those things, man. I, I was able to fast track to, through the music industry. And then, you know, I started getting hated on and they didn't like that. And I was like, well, I don't want to stay like doing this where, you know, like people are just upset because, I, you know, I was like, there has to be a better way to find a different yeah. community. And at the end of the day, um, I noticed when I started going to shows, there's people feeding certain supplements and there are supplement vendors and stuff like that. And I didn't really understand how the supplement works both on the 
human side or on the dog side back then. I just know if you put it on dog's food, you know, you're supposed to get, supposedly get a result. I didn't know what <laughs> result, you know, sure. but yeah, people, something was probably going to happen though. Yeah. And then the number one question was like, how do you bulk up your dog? You know, how do you gain mass and muscle on your dog? And I happened to, you know, contact a manufacturer I still work with today and they let me white label a, a multivitamin and, you know, just having the marketing experience in the music industry and branding experience. I just took a popular dog and threw it on the label that was in our community. Yeah. They were able to, you know, you were able to get like 30 bottles and then you could get like every 10 bottles, you get two freeze. I took like 36 units with this label, popped my trunk like I was selling CDs and 30 <laughs> sold out. And I was like, oh, I got something here. So yeah. It, started out with supplements and then to fast track it, you know, about 2012, my business partner, I was telling him, I was like, man, if we could come out with like a weight vest, you know, um, I think we could really change the game. And I was looking for like seven years to find a manufacturer. I didn't have no, I didn't have no clue how to look for a manufacturer. Sure. There wasn't one in the U S and I didn't know how to contact anybody overseas. And he just made one email and got a response. And it's with the manufacturer that we work with today. And it was just a weight, weight, vet, a human weight vest manufacturer that, you know, we customized and modified the vest and man, in 2017, we made our first sale on August 8th and it just kind of took off from there. Yeah, that's incredible. And so it starts with this passion for dogs as a kid and, you know, the dogs being able to help offset, you know, maybe some insecurities and, you know, kind of finding your way and right. Such a common, a common story that you hear yeah. from people within our community and how they, the route they end up going with the dogs and the different type of dogs that, that bring that comfort, that, that find that family bond, you know, yeah. with with the individual in it. And so you're able, like so many people I talk to, to take and spin kind of that passion into life and a, and a business model. And what can we do? You know, you were music industry, you were doing that, you learned promotion, you learned marketing. The dogs are still a big part of your life at that time. What you're doing, now it's like the supplement piece. Now, you know, 2017, the vest come out. What was kind of, talk about that, that the early days when, because you're, you know, when I started out, it was hard and I'm service-based, right? No product, yeah. it's service. I just, to find someone who wants to pay me to deliver my service. There's no manufacturing involved. There's no white labeling. There's no, you know, coming up, creating, inventing of my own. It, yeah. It's a service that I'm going to provide. So now that I have gotten over into that side a little bit, which I'm still not an expert in, it is such a different ballgame than a, a service-based business. So starting out, I think this could be really valuable for others who are have that product that they believe in and they think it's going to be special, whether it's pet industry or, or not. Talk about some of those struggles when you were getting started and those lessons that you were learning, you know, coming up on both the supplement and the, the vest side, because those are two different things as well. Yeah. So on the supplement side, the biggest struggle was understanding how to sell it outside of just going to shows, right? Like I had no education on e-commerce and how to build websites and stuff like that, how to set up websites or any, like, you know, getting a merchant account to run credit cards. I had no understanding on that. And so that was like the, the biggest challenge is that. I mean, they could be completely honest with you. This this whole journey through this this business side has been in a very expensive, hands on journey because I'm not educated. You know, I didn't go to school for business, and, I, and quite frankly, after going through all this, I don't know if you know business school would even have helped us because of how fast you know business is transitioning now and how people do business. And so the first initial was it's like you know one you got to find a manufacturer, but second you got to educate yourself on you know on the product. You know, I initially white labeled, but I noticed I recognized real early and. This this is, I think, where I was, I got really lucky is I, I understood how, you know, um, you know, when people white label, it's one thing, but to custom formulate a product and not cut corners, that's what gave us a competitive advantage because our products actually work, you know? So when yeah. you're, you're talking about the pet product, especially the food industry, and people don't quite understand this, dog food alone, when you're talking about the big boys, like the, you know, the pedigrees, the Nestle's, the Mars, you know, the Hill Science and stuff like that, they're literally competing for 20, 30 cents a bag, right? Literally competing for 30, 20, you know, 20, 30 cents a bag. So wow. they're going to cut corners any way possible. Right. right. You know, so they're going to put the cheapest ingredients throughout, you know, throughout the dog food. And what was interesting is that I guess to go back to the challenging part was at the beginning, a lot of it, the supplements was people thought it was snake oil. So oh, it's a snake oil, it's snake oil, it's snake oil. I, I feed all natural. I mean, it's like, well, turn, turn your bag of dog food around. You're going to see that not only are you feeding snake oil, you're feeding the cheapest form of snake oil because yeah. you enrich every bag of dog food, probably with the pre-vitamix coming out of China, you know? And 
And so right. the education part was the, the toughest. And then, you know, I learned, I was like, well, we started at the very beginning. There was a few ingredients that were actually recognized as muscle builders. One of them was creatine. At the time, there was a big misconception that it's hard on livers and, you know, it, it was like super hard on, on, on your body. Now it's considered a superfood, <laughs> you right. know? We right, yeah. So we were able to create products based on ingredients that I took from the human side that I knew it works because when you think about it, a lot of the human grade products are tested on animals, right? And so, you know, they're either tested on mice or they're tested on basically mice in general and rats. Yeah, and so yeah. I knew that it yielded a result. So when people actually used our products, we would cut the corner on putting all the, taking, removing all the junk out, base our products with superfood. Like for example, I could have put my, a microlose, which is a, a sugar, right? As a base. Instead, I'm like, I'm using bone broth protein. Right. I'll use, you know, a super healthy fat source like coconut oil as my base. And then I'll put an active ingredient in it to bulk it up like cre creatine and dogs are getting a result because they're getting a high quality protein, a healthy fat, yeah. and then something that supports muscle. And now we look at creatine and it's not only is it great for muscle building, it's also great for neurological support and health. So, you know, like the dogs are able to remember things for a longer period of times, focus for a longer period of times. It also supports bone density support. So like when your dog ages, your dog's bones are going to eventually get brittle, Yeah, and, you know? So there's just so many health benefits, but that was like the main challenge is just educating people. Now I'm seeing a transition where now people are understanding you got to put whole food sources in your kibble. Kibble isn't the greatest, you know, it's enough to keep your dog alive, but it's your dog's not going to thrive. Right. And then add some supplements can really help. Yeah, that's incredible. And there's so many, right? Like the, the pet food industry, there's so many options and they're all pretty good marketers. And so, you know, you can have 10 different products, not just different in name, but legitimately different in compound everything of, of what it consists of. And you could buy each one if you went for face value of what the descriptions are and the marketing campaigns say a great food, a great product for your dog. And if you don't know, you, you really just don't know. And you've seen horror stories. I've seen them, you know, all the time and, and read them. And so that is a part where the education piece, you know, really comes into play. And I agree with you. I'm glad to see more people starting to recognize, hey, there's better options out here for, you know, your pet than what you could grab from the gas station on the way home because you forgot to, you know, plan ahead for your, for your animal. Let's talk vests a little bit, you know, because this is something that's always been fascinating to me and you know gosh you've had so many different designs and styles and stuff from you know the, the weighted vest to uh stress relief to cooling to heating the, talk about the vest a little bit what what brought that to your mind as being like hey this is is a viable piece that's missing because there's a million harnesses out there. Right. Yeah. And the 95% of them are dog shit. I mean, they're just terrible. They're just yeah. terrible. Your product just from experience using hands on, you know, see this is not a crap product. If, if you've never heard of it before, and we're going to have links to the, the site on the show and stuff like that. But you know, so people can click on and, and, and follow it and look into it. But man, this is an incredible product and it's scalable to so many different sizes of dogs and needs. What got you there to that? Like this is a legitimate need that we can help with. Well, that's a great question. So first of all, you know, when you talk about, you know, my, my whole mission was I want to eliminate dog obesity. So it, it was like, okay, can we educate the consumer on what to feed? That's going to be pretty difficult because everybody's kind of set in their ways on what they're currently feeding. Right. And then we go, okay, let's look at their lifestyle. Now there's a lot of dogs who have, let's just say one over one out of five, one out of uh, two dogs over 50% are either overweight or obese. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, okay, well, it's going to be hard to educate them. It's going to be hard to get people out there to exercise your dog what is there what's one thing that we can offer all dogs no matter what diet they're eating what lifestyle they're living that can generally give them a competitive advantage in life when it comes to improving their overall health and well-being and that's exercise and a elevated form of exercise would be fitness and resistance training so how do we do that well that's where the weighted vest comes in and then you know we so for example, as soon as you put the vest on the dog, which takes about 20, 15 to 20 seconds a day, right? And less than that to take it off. As soon as you put it on the dog, it immediately is receiving the health benefits of exercise. So it doesn't matter what, you don't have to change his lifestyle and you do not have to change his diet. At the bare minimum, put it on your dog for an hour or two a day and it's going to transform your dog's life and it's going to slow down the aging process of living cells, keep him at a healthy weight, improve joint health. And then, I mean, we can take even a deeper dive when it comes to lowering the risk of health related diseases and then going into the dog psychology side of things because 
because, you know, it's now we're now being sought after for its anxiety, ability to address anxiety and behavior issues, which is like a yeah. major thing. And so I really believe it's the most impactful tool that's ever hit the pet industry when it comes to your dog's overall health and well-being, both physically and mentally. And once we get that message out, man, I think we're off to the races. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, and the thing too, you know, it's not just the benefits of the dog wearing it. I mean, this is a functional harness. I mean, there's other accessories that, that you use. We've actually, I I had a dog that worked great on. We would track with it. It was very comfortable for the dog, you know, to wear, you know, for that. It was actually a perfect setup for that particular dog. But I mean, you guys have, you know, weighted bags, you know, that can be pulled, you know, attached to the harness, or, you know, what are the bands? Resistance bands, the parachutes, yeah. you know, it is a very functional, I mean, it's got pockets, it can, you can carry, the dog can carry stuff. You have it set up where the small weight bags, because when you purchase the vest, it comes with the, the weight bags and your recommendation is usually what like pellet like bb's yeah so for example the the new v4 we modify which is it's a which is going to be our newest version that we're going to get next. We're going to actually going to launch next month. We have two forms of it, right? We have the X Dog V4, and then we have the V4 Max. Now, the V4 okay. Max is what you're talking about, which is going to have the additional D rings for kind of like those extreme dog owners, like those who compete at the highest level and really yeah. want to take the dog to the next level. That way, you can use the resistant accessories like the weighted drag bag, the the speed shoe, or the resistance band, and it's going to have front shoulder weights. And then we're going to launch the V4 Max, which is going to be a more affordable version that we're going to go into major retails with. So we're going out right. to Pet Global on the 19th through the 22nd of this month. And we're sitting down with major buyers right now, major retail, which is like a dream come true. But we got to make sure that we have it at a great price point to where it's going to move. So, you know, the everyday dog owner who's not an extremist can utilize the X-Dog V4. And then you have your extremists um, that can use the X-Dog, you know, uh, V4 Max. And yes, the, so each vest will come with a set of warming and cooling gel packs, um, which is great. You can use that as far as a recovery. If you have a dog that's, if it's hot outside and you want to yeah. um, work them out, you can, you can freeze the gel packs. Or if it's cold outside, you can warm them up. And they also, that which also makes great for like warming and cooling compression, depending on the symptoms that that, you know, a dog dealing with anxiety issues uh, may be dealing with. And then um, we have weighted bags that you can gradually increase the weight with these on the v4 we we initially went with bbs with with the zipper pockets but yeah. now we went back we're like we ran into a problem that's another issue when you develop product you're going to have to test the market and figure out how you can modify and make things better sure we, we took the weight bags and we went back to the velcro bags and that way you can either use sand or bbs and each one can reach the ideal weight of five percent for high velocity training which includes like anything that's sprinting running jumping or low impact movement up to ten percent which is you know, control leash walks, obedience training and stuff like that. Yeah. And so with that method of gradually conditioning your dog, either using the weighted gel packs or gradually in filling, you know, the weight bags up, you're going to be able to condition the muscles correctly. And, and since 2017, we've had zero injury reports. We've sold almost a hundred thousand vests and we've yeah. had zero injury reports. Now on average, just on the flex elite alone, it's a, it's on average yearly about 20,000, both 20,000 people and dogs get injured just on the flexi lead, you know, and it's, it's crazy. And so not to have an injury using a fitness tool, like a weighted vest yeah. is, is remarkable. So, you know, that's something I'm, I'm really proud of right there. No, I mean, and you should be. And the thing that I've always been crazy impressed with is like, you didn't come out with the vest and just say, Hey, this is the best vest on the market. These are the benefits. Nothing's going to equate to this, you know, and just push it and push it and push it. I mean, I've, I've been connected and communicating with you and following you for years and years and years. And you were always innovating you are always looking for a way to improve the product right and Absolutely. which which plays into the mission of you know eliminating dog obesity it's like what else can we do to help these dogs and it's a constant cycle right like you could you could have the same vest and change the color and you'd be able to sell some more vests there's people out there that are going to buy every color every size like every you know, rendition. And that's cool. And that's a scalable opportunity. But the fact that not only are you doing that, but you're also looking to improve the product, whether it through accessories, whether it's through materials, quality, impact, that's awesome, man. So many manufacturers, all they're looking for is cutting cost, yeah. right? They figured out how to make something. All right, now how do we make this as cheap as possible? Now, obviously, from a business standpoint, you have to do that. It's like, hey, how do I make this to my expectations for as cheap as possible, right? That's important. 
Yeah. Um, but the focus isn't let's sacrifice 40% of my expectation for this product so that we can sell it for cheaper. Well, that's it's the beauty about the V4. I'm oh, sorry to interrupt you. That's no, the beauty. The V4 is that uh, we were able to cut costs on our manufacturing side at the same time, increase the quality of the vest. Yeah, that's great. And, but we did how we did it was okay. We're like, okay, I want to, I want to, I want to impact a million dogs on a calendar year. And I'm like, how are we going to do that? Well, we had to bring in a partner, right? Well, that partner who had come, who has come in, guess what? They've been in the industry for 20 years and guess what? They're good friends with some other manufacturers who actually <laughs> own it. And there's no middleman, you know? And so we're actually going out there and, you know, a lot of people have their products made in China, but we're actually going to sit down with a manufacturer out of Vietnam this coming up week. Okay. And that's, that's kind of sits at home because my mother's from there, right? Okay. And the, ironically, that's why I, I, I'm not saying that God favors me, but I, what I'm saying is God does me a lot of favors, and He opened this You're door. You're favored, bro. <laughs> yeah, he did a he did he did a favor for us this past week, and I got a I got a text message, and it, and it was like, hey, we're going to be able to not just land it at our at our goal, we're actually going to probably beat landing it at, at our ideal goal by you know um, probably about twenty percent because and another twenty five percent because if people don't know this is that there's a 25 percent tariff tax on anything dog related come out of china okay. so if you get it done in vietnam and then have it imported from vietnam that's 25 percent that you're saving so if you're spending a hundred dollars out of china you're going to sp spend about 127 dollars and 40 cents out for that product right and then and so that's a big margin when you're talking about tens of thousands of units and so um re relationships are important you know and so being able to take that because the, the main thing is, is like, we need to get this on the shelves it, with these retailers to where they get their 60 points. Right. And we make our margins as well. Yeah. We need to be able to sell it for around 49 99. Like that's our ideal goal and then get it to our trainers at, a, at an extremely premium wholesale price so that they're getting their 60 points as well. Right. And that we we're all able to impact and win, you know, at the end of the day, that's, that's the, the more dogs we can impact. It's just a perfect ecosystem for all of us. Yeah, I agree. And um, talk a little bit about kind of manufacturing headaches over the last couple of years. Because I know you said you got a new manufacturer now, and that's helping a lot on costs, increased margins for both yourself, any vendors you're working with, et cetera. But what were some challenges over the last couple of years that, that were hemming you guys up, if any, or were you, were you not impacted over the last couple of years with, with materials and stuff? Uh, the, the tariff on China was the big thing. You know, yeah. when, when you're importing a container and you're usually expecting like eight to $10,000 for the container and you get a bill for 40 grand, <laughs> you know, you're like, whoa, you know, it's a pretty big, big spike on that. But on the manufacturing side, we, we got really lucky. Uh, if I was to say, if you are going to get products manufactured, make sure you get the prototypes in and then you test the shit out of them. Um, just test them and test them and test them. Because our, our first mistake when we initially got the vest on our first batch is when they came in, first they were about 120 days late because we didn't know the importing time, right? And, and that right. it took. And then we didn't double check any of the stitching. So our consumers were upset they get the vest. And next thing I know, we're getting hundreds of emails of, of their vest falling apart. And so, you know, that was, a, that was a big costly learning experience, but it was a valuable learning experience because, you know, we increased the durability and understood where the weak areas were, but, and we, we were lucky to have very understanding customers. Right. Yeah. Like, and so, um, and that was early on. That was early on. So now it was just basically sizing things. So, you know, with the V4, we we moved the fitness bands from the back shoulders to the front shoulders, which now addresses the issue on the, the neck size. We went from having 12 sizes to now we're going to have five sizes that will cover the lion's share of dogs that weigh between 15 pounds to 180 pounds. And wow. <laughs> yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, like when you're trying to maintain 12 colors and 12 sizes, you're going to run into sizing issues as far as like, man, we're not, you know, we've got a boatload of these colors and these sizes and we're not sitting and we're, we need these sizes. We don't have them in stock. So that was a manufacturing issue that we got fixed, but it took someone like Brian who came in and partnered up with us, who does, you know, the partner manufacturer of distribution to go, how, what are your two top selling products? And can we you know, what are the weight of the dogs and can we create a product? And I don't know why it didn't, it didn't dawn on to me, but he planted that seed and I was like, I think we can do that. And we ended up doing it and I'm excited about it because it's less of a headache because, you know, even selling on e-commerce and, and just creating all those listings on e-commerce is just a nightmare, you know? like yeah. No, dude, when I came by and saw your guys' place and you were walking me through the warehouse and, you know, 
fulfillment and shipping and showing me all the different, you know, areas set up. And I'm sitting there, my mind was going bonkers. And you had like a, I think a container had just showed up like right before I was getting ready to leave. So they started offloading and doing different things. I'm like, holy crap. Like there's so much stuff here. And I'm thinking about all the different SKUs and getting everything in. And like, if you get behind on maintaining inventory, your numbers are jacked. Yep. And I just think about from a business management standpoint, how difficult and challenging that is. So you're like, man, it took someone like you said, Brian, is that who your partner is? Yeah. You know, Brian yeah. to come in and say, hey, why don't we do blah, blah, blah? Have you thought about it? And you're like, what the hell? Why didn't I think about that? Well, sometimes, yeah. man, we're so deep in it. Yeah. Right. All we see is what's like five feet in front of us. <laughs> yeah. And it's impossible to see those moves that literally can equate to one big margins, yes. less stress most of the time yep. and, you know, a better outcome. But you're just rolling. And yeah. when you're rolling or if you're dealing with other outside pressures or things like that, man, I, I do that all. I hate to admit that, but I mean, that happens to me all the time that there's things and I, I, I want to believe I'm, I'm getting better. I do believe I'm getting better, you but are. you know, it's like, if you can't get that partner who can have eyes from a different, different vantage point yeah, or a consultant or a coach or somebody who can just see it from a little different perspective. Yep. Or someone who's been where you're trying to go before to come in and say, hey, you can get where you want to be, but not with how you're doing it right now. Yep. Because we don't know what we don't know. Yeah. And then it's the part to understand. And I think this is important for, you know, all the entrepreneurs out there. It's like you don't know what you don't know. When you know it, be humble. Yeah. Drop the ego and switch. Yes. If that means your whole business model is about to change. It doesn't mean your vision and your idea and your concept is shit. It just means you're doing a pretty good job getting to where you are. But if you really want to do it right, yep, you probably got to take some considerations in that you don't know exist. And don't let your ego keep you from, from winning. Yeah, and that, that was a blessing. Like I said, when, when Brian had came on, he initially came on just to sublease. And I think he was just kind of watching to see how well the vests were selling. Because I kept selling. I was like, dude, you need to jump on board on this. And it was one of those things where, you know, he's a numbers guy. So I deal with maybe 40 pallets at a time. He deals with about 1,200 to 1,500 pallets at a time, right? Wow, yeah. About 40 SKUs. Um, he'll probably knock that down a little bit. However, margins matter to him. And so for him to come on board to, to, to be a part of this, it, it was like, I got an expert in house who's consulting me and he, he brings a strength to the group that I didn't have, or my other business partner, Steven didn't have. So now we have a person who is in house that is an expert on wholesale distribution to major retails. He's not big on e-commerce. He, you know, he's right. a, He's part of vendor central Amazon, which is almost, you have to be invited to be on vendor central. Okay. And, and so, for example, they Amazon gives him a purchase order list of containers at a time, and they sell sell his product. Where we post our our listings on Amazon and, and sell on their platform, there's a big difference. He's getting a check every ninety days, you know, or every six. <laughs> it's a big check, and I try to get on there. They're like, "Yeah, we'll hit you up when you're ready. Yeah. We'll we'll let you know." It's like yeah. calling American Express trying to get the black card. They're yeah. like, "Well, Mr. Wilson." No, <laughs> we'll, we'll have our people call your people and that won't be happening. Anytime soon. <laughs> so yeah. the V4 and the V4 max is the new model. Yep. That's coming out that we're so excited about. What is what's next for X dog? Like what's next for Stan? Like what, where are y'all headed? You know, what are you dreaming for? What's the vision look like? I know a million dogs you want to impact in a year. Um, which I love, man, and I can get behind for sure. But what else is going on? What, what? Because I know, I know you, brother, and, and your mind is always racing with with ideas and thoughts. And you know, what what are you up to? So the the new thing is, you know, I've always done this on on e commerce, right? And I, I was like, in order to impact a million dogs, it's going to be challenging to do it that way. However. If we can get into retail, that that's going to be our our big big play, right? And obviously, Brian has these relationships with Petco, PetSmart, Hollywood Feed, Pet Supplies Plus. I mean, we're yeah. going. We got meetings with buyers after buyers after buyers, and retail is our next thing. Like, I want to like ideally, my dream is not to be doing the day to day operational stuff here, yeah. and to actually getting and and getting in the car and going or traveling to all these locations and 
educating the stores, educating. It's just that that's what's really exciting for me. I've, I've always dreamed of it, right? Like I've yeah. always wanted to get in there. And then in addition is getting with, with these trainers. You know, the new program is going to be that we're setting up is going to also be great for our, for the trainers that are in our network, because now they're able to, they don't have to carry 12 products as 12 different sizes, right? You can yep. carry a case that has two, you know, two, like a two smalls, two mediums, two large, which will be the line share of, of probably the client base that you're going to be dealing with. And it's going to be at a super affordable price. Yeah, so awesome. you, you'll, you'll, you'll find another avenue to, you know, um, to actually, you know, bring in general revenue for your business. And that's, that's the beauty. Like that's all, I, that's the next big play. I, you know, I'm, I think ambition is great at the same time. You have to, you have to dial it in. That's what kind of put me in a bad place. You know, I, I created custom formulated dog food. I did a bunch of toppers. I did treats, you know, I had to go and go, what's working, bring it back in. These are the supplements we're going to focus on. And now we're going to work on focus on e-commerce, the yeah. vest and going into retail. And that's, that's our move. Good for you. And the thing that's great too, is you go in and have these meetings with the retailers is you actually have data to show that, Hey, we've pushed a hundred thousand plus of these things through e-commerce and trade yeah. shows. Yep. It's going to move off your shelves, right? Like I I've been out here doing this on my own for these last several years. Like, Put it in front of people in a store. Yeah. And where they're walking through, like they are going to move. And it, I'm excited for you, man. I mean, I, I'm praying that these meetings go tremendously well beyond your wildest dreams and imagination with it. And that fulfillment is is easy and you can deliver what they're ordering after the first round or two. Cause I, I believe once you get it that easy in front of somebody, not these, not the little boutique shops you're talking about, like major players in the pet industry and yeah. the boutiques push product for you. And that's, that's great. That's awesome. It's just at a smaller scale, but the reach that those big names that you mentioned have, Oh my gosh, man. Oh, like, yeah. That's a game changer. I, I'm, I'm even thinking like Walmart, Cabela's Bass pro shop. Like absolutely. That's that's where we, we want to go with this thing. And, um, it, and I, the buyers, you know, as soon as we send them over the product sheets, they were, they're excited because it's something unique. Cause when you go to these trade shows, dog bed, dog bowl, another leash, another collar, freeze dried everything now. Yes. <laughs> you know? yeah. And yeah. It's just like, they're like, what? There's a product that can actually, I can feel good about selling to, to our consumers because it, it solves a lot of problems. It's going to, it's a, it's a great investment for any dog owner. And I want, I want it yep. to be as common as a leash and collar, but I really believe it's going to be the most impactful tool to ever hit the market. If we can get the message out, we can convey the yep. message out properly, which is again, simplifying it, you know, warming, cooling vests. We're going to deal with fitness, uh, anxiety and behavior. If your dog yep. has behavior issues, this vest can help get with a certified trainer. If your dog has anxiety issues, uh, utilize this tool, get with a certified trainer. And if you want to improve your dog's health, just invest into it. Yeah, that's dope. That's great, man. Talk family a little bit. How's family? Family's good. Uh, you know, I had a new son. He's about 18 months and man, he's, brought, man, he's changed my life as far as like really, you know, my, my unique perspective on how healthy I need to be to sustain the energy levels to keep up with them. Yeah. You know, run, business and to be able to keep up with them is absolutely um challenging but man it, it you know i have two older kids i have a son who's 22 and a daughter who's 20 and um i was young when i had him and so it's kind of like i don't know it's almost kind of like i got this grandparent mentality you know yep. where like everything i've messed up where i felt like i messed up with my other children which i don't you know they're great kids but i'm like man i i would have done that a lot better you know as far as just you know guiding yeah. them in the right direction yeah it's funny you say that so logan graduated um june last year you know took the summer to just chill and relax and in august you know came to work for us yeah. and you know that's what he wanted to do he decided that like junior year of high school he wanted to be a part of the business and, and i'm like well man look we can get you learning more in six months and four years of college so you know if you, if you want to be in the pet industry and particularly on the marketing side and dogs let's 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 roll i would love for you to be here but it's so funny because I think about that. I'm like, all right, he's going to be 20 in December. And um, a couple of our really, really close friends, they kind of did the opposite of my wife and I. Like my wife and I graduated college, got married, had kids pretty quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Our dearest friends, most of them waited until they were like late 30s, early 40s to start having kids. Yeah. And I'm like, my kids are graduated, walking out the door. Uh-huh. 
and now like my godson's like five and like six and you yeah. know my little nephews and nieces are all teeny tiny and i'm looking at them and i'm like god bless y'all i don't have it in me right i couldn't do it right now i'm yeah. gonna be a great i'll be a great granddaddy one day like i'll be the awesome the best grandpa like you could imagine but holy cow if I had to have my own, or if I was starting over right now, I'd be in trouble, Stan. I mean, we make it work because my wife's an angel, but brother, yeah. I would be in trouble if I was starting over. But there's so many things that I'm to your point of, like I'm, I learned from the first two who are older now you're talking about and the things yeah. you're doing differently with the baby. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. Poor Logan had to take on the chin and just deal with because his dad was a dumbass. So. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it's such an interesting thing because it's like, man, like, you know, I, I invest the time and energy into, you know, his learning curve. You know, the kid speaks, he's bilingual already and awesome. uh, he's super advanced at that. And he's signing, like he does a bunch of sign language stuff now. So I've had to learn Spanish. I've had to learn sign language and, yeah. It, it's been fun and it's just it's so interesting just sitting back and watching him grow and i know if i you know i can nurture him with the right things to put in his mind making him earn things you know now i feel like you know the world's getting softer and if yep. he, you can get your kids to you know have a little little beast in them you know just have a little that's bit right of a dog in them they're going to be able to run things and so I mean, yeah that's great that logan at, at being 20 years old to want to jump in business it's such a such a competitive advantage man for, for the rest of his life to, yeah. to learn the things that you're going to need to learn to to be an entrepreneur because business is one of the most challenging if not the most challenging thing you can do as far as career choice wise is running a business oh yeah there's a hell of a lot easier things to do logan jump in here real quick jump on on video i'm about to i'm about to show off i'm gonna do a, a flex with stan so you're talking about how your 18 month old's bilingual right yeah. Like I couldn't take that subtle flex, just let it fly. My son here is also bilingual. Logan, hit us with some Spanish. Hola. That's <laughs> right. That's right. All right, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, yeah. I'm sure he's gonna be traveling to Texas a lot, right? So yeah, you know. yeah, he's gotta get it in. He's gotta yeah. get it in. Man, that's so funny. No, it's one of my probably one of the things I'm proudest of in my life, you know, second only to you know, my, my wife, you know, still wanting to be with me every day, you know, and loving me after all these years, because we started dating when we were 16. Right. Yeah. And we, we met when we were 14. You know, I'm very proud that I'm still someone that she chooses to be with, because I surely don't make that easy. But a very close second to that is that we created something that my son wants to be a part of. Right. Because I, I work like crazy. This business, you know, has provided everything, but it's also cost me everything. Yeah. And, you know, people who aren't in it can't really understand that statement. Like, and what I mean by like, yes, it's provided everything, but the cost is so great. Yeah. And um, whether it's, you know, personal wellness, <laughs> you know, mental well-being, yeah. uh, mental health, family time, uh, financial resources or lack thereof, yeah. um, you know, it, it's so much and it, it literally costs everything, but it provides everything. And to the fact that it's something that we've built that he chooses to be a part of, you know, it's, it's really, I haven't lacked motivation. Like I stay fired up, man. I'm like you, like I'm, I'm driven, I'm ready to roll, but there has been this new sense of like revigoration with Logan coming in yeah. where I'm like, oh man, we're just getting started. Yeah. We're just now, you know, and we've, we've kicked off some different stuff but we had to be very strategic with it because i agree you started talking about like the treats and this and that and it's almost like a distraction right yeah. a distraction from what really really works and we've started some stuff over the years but we've had to let it sit because it couldn't get the focus because the training is the primary thing yeah right that is who we are at our core is the training piece yeah. but as we've grown you know, we, we've tried some of the things, but for success or failure, I wouldn't say any of them failed. It just wasn't worth it to be a priority. Yeah. And it distracted from the, the bigger picture. And the, but last year we did kick off our, our media company and, you know, that's been freaking tremendous and it's, it's married right up with the dog training side and, and we're servicing a lot of my off leash canine locations but then also helping other businesses as well and it's been really freaking great and it hasn't been a a distraction to the yeah. core business it's really been a great addition but this was the trick for us and this is why i'm really excited for you and your journey where you're on 
is because you've got the right partners finally. Yeah. You've got the right team in place. Yes. And some of the stuff we've been working on and implementing the last year or two, I could have never done in my wildest dreams, no matter how much I wanted to, because I didn't have the right team in place Yeah, to create that margin that I needed to either come up with the concept, to come up with how to implement it, because I, I can be uh, an implementer, right? Uh, I can be the tactical person, do those things, but that's not my gift. My gift is the visionary, the ideas, yes. big ideas, th see things from a global perspective. And then I need to be able to communicate it in such a way where the implementers can go and run with it. Right. And they're yeah. motivated to run with it. Well, for so long, I had to be both. Mm. And then as we built those teams up, we got those partners running our, our different locations with the training and building those teams and just doing fantastic work with them across the country. Then it's like, okay, I got this margin from a time standpoint. What's next? How do we continue to build upon the business? And it's all about people and the right people. And so that's, again, why I'm super excited for you because just in our most recent conversation and then hearing you talk about it today, you know, you've everybody who's been a part of your journey since you started this thing, just like everybody who's been a part of mine, good, bad, and different, they added value. Yeah. And, you know, every single employee, every single partner, every single whatever, you know, whether it ended good or not, there was value add there. And yeah. they were important for a season of the business. Um, and people think you got to do stuff together forever. And that's not necessarily the case. Some yeah. people are seasonal and there's nothing wrong with that. And people should be honored for the season that they helped your business get where it was. But it doesn't mean you're going to be the one to get me to that next part, right? Yes, absolutely. I completely understand that. Um, yeah, it's like the only person who's actually with me right now is Steven, who has been with me from the very beginning, you know. And it's because he's invested as much as I am as far as just like it's it's he wants to see this thing through and win. Yeah. Then the, the new members of our team, they both have successful businesses. You know, even James, I didn't even mention him. You know, he's a guy who's came in here and he owns a company called the 411 Agency. And it is a big, it's a big, uh, it's a media. They, they produce a lot of marketing material. So we have yeah. in-house, you know, marketing. Uh, we can create our marketing inside in-house. So any type of marketing materials that we need. But not just that, he has so many resources. Like he does the pamphlets for the Dallas Cowboys and, and you know. Awesome. He, a lot of huge networks and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, and it's a, there's a big difference because even if they're not, in, they weren't invested into the business at the current moment, they were invested into seeing me win. Like they were helping me when I was going through a very dark time yeah. and, and it's just because they actually care. And I was like, Oh, oh this is what friendship's all about. Right. Yeah. Like it was real friendship where you can't offer them anything at the moment and they want to still help you out, you know? That's right. And so that's, and like you said, like, you know, no hard feelings to anybody who was here. You know, they were all I'm not, they were all probably great. They're all great people, you know. And at the end of the day, one of the biggest challenges was going, you know, it's my fault. You know, if it didn't work out, it's because I did something wrong and I needed to learn from that. And it yeah. was the season. So I take 100 percent accountability because I'm 100 percent accountable, you know. Yep. Yeah, so. that's that's a hard pill to swallow. But it is, you know, and I say it all the time, like at the end of the day, it's my fault because yeah. even if you screwed it up and I'm the one who put you in that position yeah. to screw it up, I'm the yeah. one who thought you'd be able to handle it. Yeah. I think, you know, we have this, <laughs> we have this feeling that they're going to learn the same way, you know, or they have yeah, the same, yeah. they're invested just the same. And it's just, it's one of those things. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's just a very challenging thing because you want to have faith in them and you want to keep believing in them and you want to be able to take their word that they're going to follow through. And they, when they don't, it's just like, dang. And, but again, it, it was a learning lesson and you just learn from it and you move on and you know, you don't, you don't make the same mistakes. <laughs> One of the most painful lessons I learned very early on and not early on enough was because it used to just frustrate me to no end. I'm like, I just don't understand why they don't care as much as me. Yeah. I'm like, well, they don't give a shit. They're paid yeah. like an employee. Yeah. You know, they're paid, they, they're going to look at it as an employee and, and, and they should. So we, I need to get better with vision. Yeah. I need to get better at making sure people feel pride in their work and, and that they're valued and worthwhile, you yeah. know, or, you know, I, I need to just accept the fact that even if I do all those things, I need to understand that it's impossible for them to care as much as me because it's mine. Yeah. 
It's mine. Like, I care about your son because I'm a good human being. That's your son. I want your son to be healthy and grow and that would be the best guy in the world, right? I can't care about your son as much as you want to yeah. or as much as you do. It's yeah. impossible. Yep. And it's the same thing with our businesses. But, man, I could not understand that. It would piss me off to no end. And it, and then, but that was just immaturity from a leadership standpoint. Yeah. Leadership is so challenging, man. <laughs> like I can't even, ex like I hate, I almost hate being a leader, you know, like, yeah. I hate because you know, it's just like, you're the tip of the spear. So if somebody messes up, they're, they're not getting called out. You're getting called out publicly, you know, the right. customer service, it's all Stan's fault, yep. <laughs> you know? And, and yep. it technically is at the end of the day, you know, you either train them right and put them in the right positions to win. You got, like you said, sell them on the vision. They have to understand that there is growth and opportunity for them to have an inve invested interest, you know? Yeah. Um, and for me, like I, I was like, you know, I was, it was one of those things where I just didn't position people right. And I, I wanted to make sure I wanted to make sure they t were taken care of. So I just put band-aids over everything. And I, I kind of just let things, you know, slide when I should have held people accountable because I thought I couldn't do it myself. Yep. And I was forced to have to learn to do it myself. And then I'm like, man, I got ripped off. <laughs> and I've been getting ripped off this whole time. And, right. so, and now the new partners that are coming in, they've all had they all have an invested interest. So like it's it's just a new energy getting, you know, getting these texts from these guys going, hey, this is what we can do. You know, I think I got I got a guy who can do this and I got a person who can do that or we can make this marketing material. Here's a new fly. I want to show you that I think, man, it just helped convert better or, or this ad that can convert better. And it's just like that energy level. They're all invested. It's like, oh, this is powerful. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, look, man, I want to honor your time. I, I appreciate you so much. I think the world of you and, and what you're doing. Um, I'm going to hit you up. I, I might be in um, in the area next week. If you're in town, maybe we can hook up. Yeah, I'll be yeah. gone the 19th through the 22nd. But other than that, if you're if you're okay. here, I'll, I'll make time for it for sure, because I, I know we can do something big together for sure. Yeah, I'm excited about that. And I want to I want to keep talking and pressing that forward. I want to help you get to that million, man. So, you know, I, and I think that we can do that in a big way across a couple channels. So there's some stuff I want to talk to you about. But what's the best way for people to connect with you guys, learn more about XDog? You know, what, what's a good way for them to follow you guys? XDog.com and, you know, add XDog on Facebook, Instagram. Um, those are those are the easiest ways to get in contact with us. Um, cool. Just go to XDog.com. Check out XDog University. We're going to launch that pretty soon. And that's going to be on the educational side. And I think that's, you know, those – I think that's going to be very impactful. Um, and just other than that, like, yeah, that's how you can reach out to us, you know, just support us there. And, um, uh, man, like just message us. We're here to help. You don't have to yeah. buy our products. You know, um, if you have a question about a dog message us, we're here to help you out. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And he means that guys like this is one of those genuine dudes, you know, on the planet when he's saying he cares about these dogs and their health and, and better in their lives. I mean, it's, it's a genuine statement. So Stan is honor, man. Thank you for coming on, you know, and talking to our listeners and, and our viewers. Um, I'll catch up with you soon guys, share the show, leave a review. If you got questions for, for Stan and you know, you can send them to us, we'll get them over to them and connect y'all, but anything we can do to help, but we'll catch you next time on the big dog podcast. Thanks, Dan.